It's the next level. That was a spectacular entrance, seriously. The 10 rings have reinforcements en route. We need to move now. Fine by me, Lieutenant Killmonger? What is that, German? A nickname. Welcome back to the show, panelers. I'm Steve, and tonight I am joined by Strange Indeed's own Paik from the Podcastica Network. As Mark is still in the process of moving and getting things set up, so for tonight it will be me and Paik discussing the next episode of What If on this episode of Panels to Pixels. Good evening, Paik. Hello. How are you? I am. Uh, I am well, sir. <laughs> Thank you. And how are you? I'm great. I'm, I'm having a great week, and I'm glad to be here. Always Amen. fun to to talk with you, do different podcasts, and of course, talk Marvel. I am such a huge Marvel nerd that this is <laughs> this is fun to do. <laughs> thank you, thank you so much for coming on. I know it, it was kind of short notice. I was hitting up different people, and uh, uh, and and you were the second person that came to my to my brain. So uh, cool. But uh, I, and I, hopefully I'll be able to get the, the first person on next week, maybe, or we'll, we'll see what happens. But uh, we're just going to launch into this and I'm going to give a synopsis of the episode and then uh, get kind of what your initial thoughts were of it. So this was episode yeah. six of what if and what if Killmonger rescued Tony Stark. Killmonger rescues Tony Stark when his Humvee is attacked in Afghanistan and manipulates his influence for his designs of conquering Wakanda. A much better synopsis this week than the last couple ones. <laughs> <laughs> but what did you think uh, initially just of this one, Pake? Um, I, I appreciated it a lot more on second watch. Um, it's not the strongest or my favorite episode of What If so far, but that said, it's still really good. Um, just, again, being such a Marvel nerd, like, it's fun to pick up all the little, like, Easter egg kind of things. There's a lot of callbacks to the movies that's really interesting. A lot of things that are similar. A lot of things that you're like, oh, that's an interesting, fun detail that's changed. And then, of course, even just, like, little nods to characters or one of my points I'll talk about later, you know, is even just, like, in the music and things like that. And then I also love the character of Killmonger. I'm a huge like fan of Black Panther and he's one of those like my favorite Marvel villains where he's like, you know, if he didn't do some of the psychotic things he did, you'd be like, well, he's kind of making a good point. Is he really a villain? You know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I totally agree. Uh, you know, listening to other podcasts is what really made me appreciate the episode more. I'm, I, I only saw Black Panther once. So mm -hmm. I, when this whole thing was going on, I had no clue. I was like, who is this guy and where's he coming from? And, and what's his association? And, and I kind of figured it out through the episode, but like I said, I only saw Black Panther once mm -hmm. and it was a while ago. So I couldn't remember like, what his association was, how he was set up with this. And I, I didn't know all the dynamics of the, the family and, and stuff. So it's, it's good that, to have someone on who, who does know the character a little bit yeah. and can, can talk about it. Cause uh, for me, but I, I kind of had the same thing. It's, it's not my favorite episode. It's still a wonderful episode. And the, yeah. the, the social commentary, uh, obviously the social commentary is huge yep. on it. And um, just, yeah, I think that's that's what got me at first is this really is the first one we've seen since Falcon and the Winter Soldier that has given us uh, kind of a social commentary. Uh, some of the other ones have, have had different things in them, but uh, yeah. So I, I really, really enjoyed it, and uh, or I really enjoyed it on the, like you did, on the second watch after I'd listened to some podcasts and could appreciate it a little bit more. All right, so we will go into our top five. All due respect, sir, isn't that a lot of firepower to aim at a country most Americans can't find on a map? By tomorrow, they won't need to. All right. As always, I always let the guests go first. So what? what is All your, right. what is, we just, there don't have to be any random order or whatever, just, just spew them out. Yeah. What is, what is your first discussion point or fifth discussion point? Yeah. And sometimes with shows like this, where it's all kind of focused on one main story, and I, we, I come across this problem on Strange Indeed, too, where it's like, how am I supposed to pull five different points out of this thing? But I managed after some uh, struggling and compiling and figuring out. 
Uh, so my number five, the first one I want to talk about is just Pepper Potts in this episode. Um, it's kind of the role she plays. Unfortunately, a lot of her doubts and suspicions are just ignored by Tony and other people around her. And it ends up kind of being a downfall of a lot of things. You know, the entire time through this episode, she's got this healthy distrust of Eric Killmonger, mm -hmm. you know, and his motives. And she's searching, you know, we get that scene where she's talking to, to Rhodey. And it's just like, you know, I'm digging and digging and I can't find anything. I can't find any concrete evidence of him being shady. And that's kind of a red flag of its own because he's, yeah. too, he's too clean. Like everybody's got something. And so I really like how she's so determined throughout this episode, you know, uh, after Tony is killed and she's the only one that points out, you know, like what happened to the evidence is like, well, Jarvis was wiped conveniently, mm -hmm. you know, and, and everybody else is just completely oblivious to that fact. It's like, well, Eric's the only one that's like been close enough to Tony to have access to that, but nobody's buying it because this guy is just, you know, so polished and says and does everything right around the right people that, Nobody else buys into it or, you know, everybody's buying into it. Nobody else is really questioning things except Pepper the entire time. And so I love that it, then at the end when we get Shuri kind of showing up and she's like, yeah, all these things that I've been thinking are true. And now we're going to need to work together to, to fix this problem yeah. the best we can. Absolutely. Um, for me, yeah, I, I totally agree. I, I love I love Pepper in this. It was it took me out of it a little bit that it wasn't uh, Gwyneth Paltrow. But uh, but I, I did love it, and that end scene is is part of my uh, uh, my points as well. That uh, I, I just love everything going on there. Um, for me, I, I was a little confused. Like I said before, I only watched Black Panther once. So in the opening monologue by the Watcher, he calls uh, Killmonger a villain, and mm -hmm. so I knew from the from the jump that he was a bad guy. Um, and so I, I knew that this was going to be leading to something more nefarious you know but he, he you know he saves tony from the the missile he takes happy's job and mm -hmm. I, I just i couldn't wrap my head around some of the, the the things and some of the dialogue because he says and here this was confusing for me a little bit he says well actually the, the reporter first says that his unit was 400 clicks away from yeah. tony so why did he uh respond to tony being attacked and he said i was embedded with the 10 rings which means yeah. he was undercover so what it was his unit backup for him he was watching him because if he was like undercover I, I i didn't understand that whole dialogue part there and he said that's when he uncovered the plot by um not jeff bridges in this one and yeah <laughs> you, you know and he had all the evidence right there with him so it just some of the things it took me a second watch to really understand more but that still that little point just kind of bugged me that i was like was he undercover was he embedded or, or were they yeah attacking? i think i think he was it, uh, embedded undercover kind of as a spy in the 10 rings organization i think his unit because it's kind of a special forces unit i think mm -hmm. they were aware that he was doing that okay okay so yeah so they may have that's been... the assumption i make is that that was his job and his unit was to you know kind of be a spy and embed himself in the 10 rings because he's good at playing he's his character is clever and manipulative and that's kind of a skill set he has okay okay good so what's your next one mm -hmm. um another kind of quick one is just t'challa chadwick boseman again it just my heart every time he shows up in one of these episodes of what if mm -hmm. because it's all you know we're seeing this and hearing his voice posthumously as after you know he tragically passed away last year and it's still hard because i mean Man, Bozeman is just incredible. And to think that, like, he filmed, like, Endgame and all this stuff, like, while he was having, like, chemo treatments and everything mm -hmm. at the same time, and that he didn't really talk about it, and most people, unless you were the closest to him, didn't even know about it. And he just kept pushing through and doing everything he could. And so then now that he, you know, to see this, you know, at least his voice acting showing up in these things, it's special to me. And so I loved having him here. And then there's the scene where he shows up, you know, kind of, which was part of Killmonger's plan. But, you know, with the, the exchange of the vibranium, mm -hmm. he shows up and he's just Black Panther, being all Black panther -y, <laughs> just taking guys out with the quickness and the sneakiness. And it's great. Uh, unfortunately, not quite a match for Killmonger with Tony's tech. Yeah. But, you know, it was cool to get that little bit of him. And then, of course, the, like, ancestral plane scene after Killmonger becomes the Black Panther and T'Challa kind of confronts him there. 
I mean, they're, you know, in the afterlife in a way, if you, you know, remember from Black Panther, Ancestral Plane is kind of its own little thing. Mm -hmm. It's a big, you know, for that family and that culture. So there's not really much he can do, but he does in that moment appear to him just to warn him that your plan for power is going to catch up with you eventually. Like you may feel on top now, but things will come around and, and karma mm -hmm. is very strong here in Wakanda. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I, other podcasts have talked about it, but I, I wonder how much, how, how much he knew that he was close to the end of his life when he recorded some of these, because some of the lines are very right. poignant uh, in both the episodes or the a couple of the episodes we've seen him in. Yeah. Um, especially here. So, uh, so yeah, great, great one. Um, for me, I, I love that training scene with Killmonger when they're, when they're setting up the drones and that's where, you know, that's kind of the one spot where we got, maybe it's the one spot, but that was one spot where we got a little bit of humor uh, in the, in the episode. And I loved how Tony thought that that was going to give him kind of the upper hand or give the drone the upper hand. Uh, but Killmonger was like, no, I'm just going to show my freestyle or I'm going right. to freestyle, you know? <laughs> and, uh, and, and so he takes out the drone and you can see the shock and surprise on Tony's face, even in the animation when, when he, that drone is taken out. And then of course, when Eric kills him and really that's where the episode really starts to go dark. Yeah. And and take this this very much heavier tone uh, that it it's where does. you see who Killmonger kind of truly is because that scene follows up I think where you really see like oh no this guy's this guy's evil because he's putting power above everything else is after he plant you know kind of plants everything on Rhodey mm -hmm. but then Rhodey is killed so he can kind of take the brunt of course you know to the American public they're going to still be treating Rhodey like a hero but under the you know yeah. behind the scenes they're all like oh man he did this yeah yeah he did but then he, you see Killmonger, you see eric standing in full uniform saluting at the funeral of Rhodes, and you're just like okay yeah he has no remorse like, yeah exactly wearing wearing the, the the uniform that he just talked to Rhodey about why are you wearing the the uniform of your oppressor yeah so yeah all right so i guess my number three yes. we're going down that way five to one uh <laughs> Yeah, kind of ties into that is Tony Stark and some of the differences we get with him. Of course, we kind of get with the Watcher saying, you know, heroes are forged in darkness kind of thing, you know, mm -hmm. through their struggles. And the fact that he wasn't kidnapped by the Ten Rings and imprisoned in this cave and forced to to work on his weaponry, which then makes him come up with all these different ideas. And he builds the suit and, be, you know, goes on to become Iron Man mm -hmm. with all without all of that happening. He's a much different person. Um, I mean, he's still very much Tony Stark, but right. but a lot of that heroic thing, like in the in, in Iron Man, where he's deciding, like, you know, oh, the things I saw over there made me realize that we've got to stop this weapons plan. Instead, he's like, the things I saw over there were terrible, so we need to double down on what we're doing. Exactly. You know, he he takes different directions. Or even I love when he's talking to to Eric, and he's like, well, we could shrink down the arc reactor, to find a way to bring it down, and he's like. No, that's dumb. And like, I guess when your life doesn't depend on doing that, it's dumb. Yeah. You think bigger. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that that was great. I, I didn't catch the, that line the first time, but I heard other podcasts talking about it, yeah. so I looked for it uh, in the, the second watch. Yeah, uh, and that kind of leads right into my to my third one, uh, which is kind of the change in Tony. And I, I don't remember. I did rewatch Iron Man recently, but I don't remember if there was a British reporter who asked him uh, if he had learned anything in Afghanistan to kind of tee up the, uh, you know, that he learned a lesson about not selling his yeah. weapons to the bad guys. Um, but here it just seems a little heavy handed by the, the episode to kind of point out. Yeah, I don't like, remember if that exact question was asked or not. It's, it's been a minute since I watched the first yeah. Iron Man. Yeah. And it just, so it, it, it took me out of it for, for a minute with that question. Cause I was kind of, why is he asking the question? Why is he asking it that way? You know? Um, uh -huh. So, but yeah, it's just that just a quick one. But that uh, uh, that us getting to see the change in Tony Stark, the change in that speech, you know, is really what kicks off the the episode into a totally different direction. Yeah. So cool. you're number two. So number two is one that's a little you know outside of the episode thinking, but it's something that I was like, this has to be one of my points because I just nerd out about these kind of things. Is the music of like Wakandan heritage and their culture and things like that. Cause we get it throughout this whole episode. It's like the black Panther music. You're, 
mm-hmm. kind of traditional African tribal kind of sounds mixed with like more modern day hip hop trap beats and, you know, things like that. And I thought that was just really cool. We get that a uh, lot of echoes throughout it. Like even at the beginning when Killmonger is saving Tony and he's shooting the 10 rings guys and then we're getting a little bit of the music. And then when they start walking off together and just the beat drops in he and you're like, all right, cool. And then, you know, he takes down Obadiah Stane and that music comes in where it's like these like Wakandan roots are showing through him in these like pivotal scenes. He, when he takes out Black Panthers, when we first hear the the more traditional sounding like Wakandan drums, like, right. which that sound I love the most. It's just like every time it pops up, I get excited. And yeah, all of it, just that line you mentioned, I guess I have to freestyle. And then that yeah. beat comes back in as he's fighting the drone or... You know, when he kills Tony or when those drones mm-hmm. are all shipping out, when his plans are coming together, that, those beats and that, that music comes in. And of course, the final, like the big battle in Wakanda, we get that chup, 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 chup with the Dora Milaje, which uh, it's just, it brings me back every time I see this scene because the soundtrack of Black Panther is one of my favorite things about it. And so now to have those sprinkled throughout like this episode. That's my, great. My I, music nerd gets all excited. Yo, that's great. I, that's why. <laughs> that's another reason why I love having you on this episode because I'm not. I'm not a big music guy. I'm not a big soundtrack yeah. guy. And so I love those sections of of your podcast when you talk about the music or you talk about mm-hmm. the, the what's the soundtrack and what's going on and what the what the 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 soundtrack scorer is doing to lead us in a certain way. Yeah, you know, and and people like me who don't notice that thing go, well, yeah, I was, my heart was kind of racing at that, at that moment when you hear somebody talk about it, but I don't even think about it at the at the, at the moment. So it's it's a it's an amazing skill to have and an artistry to it. So, mm-hmm. um, my uh, my number two, that's where we're at, right? Yeah, is uh, is that fight you talked about a little bit about that Wakanda, the fight there in Wakanda yeah. within the dome, uh, and seeing the, the Wakandans in their battle gear, seeing. Uh, uh, General Ramonda and hearing Angela Bassett's voice. I'm a huge 911 fan. So mm-hmm. hearing her voice and getting to see that character do those things, even in animation, was really, yeah. really cool. And, you know, the, the subtle thing where, we, where Killmonger, it's, I'll talk about it more in my next point because it's part of his, his whole plan. But him kind of controlling those drones and then joining in, in the fight to, again, like embed himself with the Wakandans. And I didn't even think about this until just now, like you said, that's one of his skills. His skills yeah. is he figures out, well, how can I get in to this group yep. and, and how can I go undercover in that group? And that's a, that's such a, that's another one of those skills that undercover agents have to develop and have to have uh, to survive. So uh, very, very cool. So it brings us to our last, to your number one. Yeah. And honestly, because I can see, you know, our, notes and the document mm-hmm. that we have i think because i just had nowhere else to go our number ones are the same okay so i'm like let's kind of just tag team it and yeah. you know because i know some of you you might have questions about uh, still some of his plan or whatever and so mm-hmm. i might be able to fill in some gaps but because that's kind of my number one as well is killmonger's plan what yeah. his long con here was it, it, yeah how and how long of a con was it like was it was it when he found the 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 details of the assassination of Tony Stark or the attempted assassination of Tony Stark. Did, is that where he went? He started like the wheels maybe started turning in his mind going, how can I take this one moment? Yeah. Cause I don't know if it was all planned beginning to end, but I think with, I mean, cause that's his ultimate goal. You know, black Panther. That was mm-hmm. kind of his thing is T'Chaka killed his father. Right. Then he learned about this like Wakandan heritage and realized he was just cut out of it. Mm-hmm. And so that becomes like his plan is, well, how do I get in and subvert the power from the people who took my heritage from me? They don't want me there. So how do I make myself belong? Right. And then that's coupled also with his kind of the social issue of, okay, but also, you know, how do I bring the, you know, how do I help the oppressed fight back against their oppressors? How do I keep, you know, so he's got these kind of dual plans. Right. And so it's the same here in this episode is that's his, so how, how he, how you know how far he thought ahead mm-hmm. but i think him with saving tony was a good start nonetheless to see where he could go because tony stark is the ally you want when you're trying to fight a war yeah uh- <laughs> yeah well it is it's interesting because it, again it's one of those things that that 
in so in the in the Black Panther movie, right? Because I've heard enough podcasts about it, and you're familiar with the movie. Um, he goes straight to Black Panther and challenges him, right? Just yeah. there's no subtlety about him trying to seize power. He just mm-hmm. goes directly in and says, "I'm challenging you because that's my right as a Wakandan." That yeah, I it's the same thing. He kills Claw, brings mm-hmm. Claw to Wakanda as kind of a gift, and says, "Look, I've done the thing that your king can't do, so." Maybe I'm the one that should be leading you guys, and I'll challenge him right here and right now. So in the movie, in the movie, does he manipulate Claw the same way, or is it is it? Oh yeah, he... absolutely. Claw thinks okay. he's working with him up until the end, and then he's like, mm, "Yeah, no, you got to go." Uh... <laughs> uh, but it is interesting though that, that yeah, because because of the 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 saving of Tony Stark, and because of him having this opportunity to to kill Rhodey and blame T'Challa, kill T'Challa, blame Rhodey, and then yeah. kill Tony Stark and blame the Dora Milaje. He's he's using his like we talked about before, he's using his skills and it's a much more subtler approach. Yeah. It's that and, very behind the scenes manipulative. I love that they give Andy Circus. I love Andy Circus so much. Yeah. But uh as Claw, the line where he's like, oh I'd I'd hate to play chess with you. And that's because that's what he's doing. Exactly. He's moving these chess pieces. He's got, all right, I've got the American military. I've got Wakanda. I need this from them. You know, I need this from the American military. I need their tech. Mm -hmm. I need the Wakanda. I need power in Wakanda to be able to accomplish my goals. So what if I just move these pieces around, take this king out, take this, you know, you know, take out these pawns. And now the, the two of them are at war with each other. And I just get to sit back and see what happens. Yeah, and if they are setting us up for sequel for a sequel either in this season or in in season two, it the the ultimate betrayal is going to be even worse, right? Because yeah. it's going to be this it's going to be this this you know I've treated you like a son, and I've realized the whole thing is just the whole time you've just been stabbing me in the back. Yeah, because so. I think Killmonger is aware in this episode as he was in the movie that T'Chaka is the one that killed his father. Mm-hmm. He doesn't come out right and say it in this episode as he does in the movie. So, because T'Chaka is, is already dead and out of the picture by the time he gets to Wakanda in the movie, because this mm-hmm. is earlier than that timeline. So, in the movie, in the movie, do, does, so T'Chaka doesn't know that Killmonger knows, right? I think so. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So Which, I, to, in the movie, T'Chaka is already dead by the time oh. Eric gets to Wakanda, because that goes back to Civil War, I believe, because T'Chaka is taken out. Right, by that bombing oh, right. that they, already killed, they but, planned, on, they that they pinned on Bucky. Right, but the scene where where T'Chaka kills his father is in Black Panther. Yes. Okay. Okay. Yeah, it's a flashback because uh, Eric right. was just a kid. Right, and so T'Chaka doesn't know that he's in the room or that he's he's witnessing this death. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. Cool. Cool. So that that just that sets everything up. Uh, did you have any notes? Yeah. Um. Let's see. So I'm just kind of the Watcher. I think is an interesting thing. He becomes more and more clear each mm-hmm. episode, more in view. He starts to look a little weird with the big head, but uh, that's source <laughs> material. So I'll I'll accept it. Uh, I love that Happy got the knockout punch on Obadiah Stain. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that was fun. Uh, let's see. Uh, even in animation, Killmonger's shirt has to be perfectly ripped off during battle <laughs> because, yes, why not? So um, we can see the cuts, yeah. Right. <laughs> and then... Uh, yeah, you mentioned Ramonda in that final battle. I think that like final like drone robot kill that she gets with the spear going through the heads of two of them, and then she jumps up and like rips it through the top of both. Yeah, is like maybe the coolest looking visual from the whole episode. It's like yes, yes. yeah, yeah, <laughs> kind of like when uh, when the uh, the Dora Milaje splits Falcon in yeah uh, in the zombie episode. Maybe. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Is that did all? Is that any yeah? More? I think that's kind of all the little extra notes that I had. Um, yeah. So I just had a couple real quick ones here that I know that was John Favreau doing Happy's voice, but it just didn't sound right to me. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know why, but it just didn't didn't sound right. Um, the animation was beautiful. That I really paid attention to that side by side kind of funeral scene where we saw Rhodey's funeral and T'Challa's funeral was was really just beautiful. And uh, I I don't know if everybody knows this, but the Patriot Act is actually an, an acronym. It's providing appropriate tools required to intercept and obstruct terrorism. And you can Google that. That is on the, the U.S. Congress's uh, website. That That's what Patriot Act is. It's actually 
and an acronym. And I learned that on the closer mm-hmm. the first time. I had um, another little note that somehow disappeared from my notes, but I remember taking it mm-hmm. and I don't know where it is. He's talking about voice acting. Cause like, you know, saying it was Favreau, but it sounded weird. But then on the other side of that coin is the guy who voiced, which I had it written down, but I've lost it somehow. But, uh, the guy who voiced Tony Stark in this one, because it was not Robert Downey Jr., but mm. did that guy not just nail it spot on? Oh, it was so good. It really was. <laughs> I'm, I'm, yeah, better than – was it the same guy who did it in uh, the uh, – He did the voice of, of him in the Avengers Assemble cartoon series. Okay, but it, he wasn't the same guy that did the what if, the the, the previous what if. Maybe. One. I'm not sure. I don't, I don't remember I'd I don't, have to go back and look. I don't remember it sounding that good in, in that first uh, what if with the Avengers, but, but yeah, no, he was, he was spot on. Yeah. I, yeah, I would have thought that was our, just, just like uh, in the first episode with Steve Rogers, the guy, I think the guy did Chris, yeah. Evans, you know, spot mm-hmm. on. So very, very cool. And uh, my only other, we already talked about it was the, the in scene with Pepper and Shuri and just the way, what if kind of sets up uh, these cliff, these cliffhangers that we really don't. Yeah. Cause I don't know if they're going to do a sequel to this or not. It's not really sure. Uh, Cause yeah, I was just like, well, is this plan going to come together? Are they going to fix things? I was like, who's to know? The Watcher, maybe. Uh, yeah, exactly. exactly. <laughs> so, maybe we'll be let in on it. <laughs> so you said you've got a couple of quotes? Yeah, just some... literally a couple. I've got two. Uh, my my favorite ones. And of course, they're both Tony Stark and, and Killmonger talking mm-hmm. to each other. Kind of just a back and forth. My first one uh, is when he pulls up the plans for the Liberator drones. He goes, wow, uh, bold design choice. And Killmonger says, what? I like anime. He goes, worst case scenario. We'll end up with the world's most expensive Gundam model. It's <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> great. And then I love, yeah, when he's fighting said drone later on, uh, where he goes, whoa, he's got your number. Am I right? You forget you forget, you programmed the drone yourself? Your moves are his moves. To where Eric responds, he goes, I guess I have to freestyle. Man. Oh, sorry I yeah. took that away from you. <laughs> no, it's good. It's good. <laughs> I like the whole, the, um, yeah, I only have two as well. And that's uh, Pepper Potts had referred to them as Butch and Sundance. And mm. I loved uh, Tony saying to, to Eric, you're Butch, I'm Sundance, just to be clear. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then the, the last one is is uh, is more of a serious one, but it's, it's Eric saying to... Uh, was it the Dora Milaje that he's talking to at that point or T'Chaka? I can't remember now. Um, but he says Tony Stark. I think Stark, maybe Shuri. That might um, be Shuri. Okay. Uh, he says Tony Stark, that man was a villain who didn't care about anyone. When just the previous scene before, he's used how much Tony cared about like Pepper and other people to kind of influence the American uh, uh, Ross, you know, to do yeah. his thing. So that these, this. This what you, this back and forth, this unrepentant na- nature of him is he'll say anything or do anything to. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I didn't even really pick up so much until you mentioned it earlier. Yeah. Is the things where, you know, he'll say that about Tony, but clearly c- Tony was blinded by how much he ended up caring for Eric. And mm-hmm. that was kind of his downfall. Yeah. And the same way that you mentioned, you know, he has that, I didn't even think about it when he's talking to Rhodey, you talk about why do you wear the uniform of your oppressors? And then the funeral scene, he's decked out in full uniform. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That was a really good catch. <laughs> just, just those two things. I, I, I look for those kind of things sometimes. Yeah. So, um, very, very cool. Well, thank you very much. Um, I didn't see any feedback uh, uh, and I didn't, didn't search for any news. So really we'll, uh, as we, we wind kind of wind down here, uh, we like to give some podcast recommendations and uh, I'll give you a chance to plug your podcasts uh, towards the end. But if you've got any, yep. uh, any podcasts that you're listening to that you want to, uh, recommend to our listeners yeah well i saw the one that you have on here and mine kind of ties into that oh okay. so i will let you plug that real quick first absolutely and then I, can... I absolutely i just started parks and recollection with rob Listening Lowe to it and right it, now well not right now because i'm recording this but like i paused it to come in and record yeah. and i was just listening to the I, canvassing I see, episode i did see the yeah. second episode up on my feed i haven't had a chance to to uh, to listen to it yet but yeah so parks and recollections with rob Lowe and one of the writers uh from parks and, and recreation is doing a rewatch uh from the beginning of parks and recreation and i love how they're even like <laughs> in that first episode spoiler for anybody who's going to listen to it uh rob Lowe. This is his first time watching the first season yeah. of the show. <laughs> he doesn't come in until later. So yeah, he doesn't great. This... <laughs> yeah, that he's getting to see all these things and see, you know, what they were setting up, what what didn't work and what they changed. And and I, I love that first episode with all the, the things they talked about and, and can't mm-hmm. wait to hear the second one. Yeah. And so why I let you go first on that or where I wanted you to is because mine tied into that. I think last time I was on panels, I think I plugged these same ones, but 
they're still great is because I love these cast of a show, rewatching the show one episode at a time, mm -hmm. things that have become, and I think it was a lot of, you know, quarantine and stuff that really caused this because a lot of these actors are out of work, you know, for the time being. And they were like, well, I guess we could, you know, jump on this podcast train and rewatch our old stuff and like talk about it because people want to know behind the scenes stuff. Mm -hmm. So the two, of course, that I also really love. So I was so excited when Parks and Recollection was announced because that's what I was thinking. It was like, it was one of the shows. I was like, that, I need this format podcast for this show. So now yes. it's here is of course what really started it or kicked it off was Office Ladies, which is a rewatch episode by episode of The Office with Angela Kinsey and Oh, I'm blanking as well. Jenna Fisher. Jenna there it Fisher. is. Thank you. Yeah. I always blank on her name and I don't know why. It's not that hard. But uh, I, I was following that one and then I just other life happened and I, I yeah I, I kind of dropped off listening to it. But uh, mm -hmm. uh, and then a uh, fake doctor's real friends is the Scrubs version of that. They're going back through episode episode of Scrubs with Zach Braff and Donald Faison. And that one is hilarious and great to listen to as well. So I, I love both of those. So I'm so excited to throw Parks and Recollection into that, you know, yes. uh, into that listening playlist. I, I totally, <laughs> totally agree. Love it. Love it. Um, so uh, you're listening to us on your podcast player of choice. I'm sure if you, if you could give us a review, give us a, a thumbs up, whatever, whatever they have on there, we're available on all the major platforms. I could rattle them off, but you're listening to us on a podcast player. So whichever podcast player you're listening to us on, that's your podcast player of choice. So congratulations. Uh, <laughs> our panels to pixels podcast.com website is still kind of being constructed. We do have a Facebook group, which is facebook.com slash panels to pixels. We have an email address panels to pixels one at gmail.com. That's panels to pixels one. The TO spelled out right there in the middle, the number one at gmail.com. We are on YouTube for panels to pixels podcast. Uh, so go in there, subscribe, and give us a thumbs up. Um, I put out a post earlier this week that, you know, life is happening, uh, panelers. And so it just, uh, some of these episodes are going to be delayed. Um, just bear with us and uh, we'll be back up and running uh, here in a few weeks. So, Paik, where can listeners hear you? Plug you. All right. Yeah. Uh, so I think you mentioned earlier. Yeah, so I have two podcasts that I'm on. Weekly, for the most part, uh, <laughs> you can listen to, of course, you mentioned Strange Indeed on the Podcast Network, me and Rima, covering mostly Netflix, but we'll jump around to some other stuff, but kind of streaming TV shows of, you know, different dark and twisty and sci-fi and horror kind of things like that. We just wrapped up our coverage of Netflix's Sweet Tooth. That was awesome. Go back and, you know, if you watch that show or enjoy it, go back and watch those. And Steve, you were just a great uh part of every episode with your feedback and your mic drops we always appreciate that <laughs> for sure Thank you. uh and so we're off this week for strange indeed we've got like a, one week downtime but then next week we will be back up and running because this weekend launches uh midnight mass on netflix which is the next show from mike flanagan who did haunting of hill house haunting of blind manor this show i don't think is connected to the haunting uh, kind of universe or, or timeline it's something a little different but it's still mike flanagan it's going to be horrifying and scary <laughs> and just in I, time for halloween season it's going to be real creepy and i'm excited to cover it i'm excited <laughs> to, to check it out and to, to do some live steve -ing. i got to do my first live steve for tv podcast industries this week and i've got to catch nice. up with them for why the last <laughs> man um that show's been really good too very, i'm really very digging cool. it and then uh, my other podcast is run for your lives on the Pirate Core Entertainment Network and me and Daphne cover all kinds of monster movies, creature features, and disaster flicks. We are now back. We took about a month off between seasons. We are back for our season three. And uh, I'll go ahead and play the newest episode because season three, we're about to drop the second episode of season three. We did the Tomorrow War to kick it off, which I know you love. Mm -hmm. And so episode two will be 30 Days of Night. Yeah, I and can't remember. I've seen that one, so I'm gonna have to to try to pull that one out of the the wherever I can stream it and, and yeah, uh, <laughs> and check that one out. Uh, very very fun. cool. Well, as as uh, has been said, I send voicemails to various podcasts that my friends do. I uh, I love it, and I love uh, talking to my friends about the things that excite them. And uh, so next week, uh, 
we will be on the next episode of what if whatever it is i'm not even gonna try to figure out with that whole misdirect about thor for last yeah. week's episode because i thought i had all the episodes like laid out like oh they're doing this 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 but like zombies was supposed to be like episode eight and now they yeah. just flipped everything so yeah they who knows the script on us <laughs> <laughs> um, so I have no idea, but this has been one, uh, episode 161 of Panels to Pixels. Thank you, everyone, for listening. I'm Steve. And I'm Pake. And we'll see you on the next panel.